So you may be thinking we're taking too long on just inserting into the database on one thing, but the good news is once we have this uh, user class running, we can use it for every other uh, model that we create. So models will be easier to make from now on because we already have the blueprint. Okay, so at this point, we want to improve things here. So how can we possibly improve things? Now, the thing is, every table is going to have a model. Remember that. And which means every, every model will need the insert function because regardless what's going on, we will need to be able to insert some data into that table. So which means this function uh, will be there in every single model. And that's not a good way to code things. Instead, what we need to do is create a central place where all the functions that are the same in every model should live. That way we only type them once. And if we want to make changes, we just change one place and it changes for the whole uh, system. So let's cut this whole function from here. Cut, because we don't need it here anyway. So we're going to go inside core instead and create a new class. So here I'm make a PHP tags, save this, and I will save this one as model.php. And then put a class here and I will say the main model class. So this one is um, the model. This one will be the main model. Now, I, I wanted to extend something here because if you notice, uh, we're using the DB class here. Oh, let me undo for a second there. You see, we're saying DB is equal to new DB, and then we insert from there. Now, we can avoid all this if we just give the functionality that DB comes with, we give it to the main model by default. So we can just tell it to extend the database class like that. So it's a model extends database, simple as that. So which means even though this is empty right now, see, this is empty model. This model right here already contains the functionality that database contains. So all these functions that you see here in the database are already now operational in here, even though it's empty, simply because we are extending database. So now if I go to user and cut this function and put it in here like that, okay pretty good. So now we have extra functions here that are adding to the functionality of database. Alrighty then. So uh, the only issue here is um, if we go to user model, because we need to be able to use this function in our model since we've removed it from here. So how do we do that? I'm sure you guessed by now. We extend extends model like this okay so now what we are doing by extension is that because user extends model and model extends database which means even the users class right now has the functionality that database has because it's extending this one it's it's being extended by what we're extending here so there's a chain of events going on. If I tried from within this class to call the query function directly, it will work because uh, as I extend the model, the model also extends the database. Okay, so that's how we make everything connected like that. So which means this value here that's protected table is also going to be um, available in here, even though it's not in this class here. So if you're confused about these classes and how they work, I do recommend my series on um, OOP on my channel. So what we will do is, because model is the original model, let's just put protected table here. Actually, we don't even need to put it but let's add it there just in case you know protected table is equal to let's put a generic table like users but actually this is dangerous because we may end up 
uh, overriding things that we are not supposed to. So let's leave it empty. So this table is always going to be um, replaced by, because you see model class here has an empty variable called table, but when we extend it from user and we instantiate this user class, it comes with also a table variable. And this one will replace what's here. That's what will happen. So from the model itself, if we call table, it won't be empty anymore because we're calling it from the user's uh, model side where table means something. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense in a way. So what I want to do here is say, you, I hope you've seen the other problem here. Everything here works very well because it just gets the data, strips it down, and then you see there's also this allowed columns, which exists in here. But because we're extending model, it will also exist here, right? So it's like when you extend a class, everything combines together. So, and whatever the extending class brings to the table, if it collides with what the other one has, this one takes priority. So this is why whatever we've written in table here will be the final value and allowed columns won't be, uh, will be available as well. So we don't even need to write this at all, but I'll just leave it there. So what I want here is these columns will depend on which model, because each model will have different names here. So depending on which model has extended this main model, that's what will be contained in here. So I hope that's not too confusing. So let's just do the practical part. So the problem I'm seeing here is that we have users here that's directly set there, which means this inset will only work in the users table and we can't have that. So what we would do, we want this to be universal. So users, let's leave a space there because we'll have users here and we don't want it right next there. So instead of users, we're just going to check what table is there at that time. So we say this table. So whatever table is written there, that's the word that will be put there. So that even when we create a new table, we don't even know the name yet, but we're just going to get it from there. Okay, good. So once that happens, we don't even need now to instantiate the class, this database class. We can simply say this query, because remember now query is part of this model because it's being extended, it's extending database, which has that function. So this query will work just fine. So let's test it, this again and see if it will work this time. So let's insert another row. So I'm just going to create again. Okay, so now it's saying require model.p. Fail to open, no such file exists. So it's telling me that uh, app model model.php could not be found. It even tried to auto load it in the init and couldn't find it. Why? Because when trying to auto load, it's always looking in the models folder, but that's not where this is. It's in the core folder. And like I said, anything in the core folder should be included over here. Now, because model extends database class, which means the database class must exist by the time we load the model.php. Okay. Okay. So you need to look at that order when you are doing these things. So here I will say model.php. So anything in the core folder should be added here. Otherwise it won't work. So at least we have model.php now. And if I refresh, this should solve the problem. Now if I come back here and browse, you see that now I have two records that are similar. And of course you see the problem immediately. We are adding emails that already exist. So how can we use uh, our validator to check for that? Now, this is convenient because uh, the model is extending the database class, which means we can read straight from the database from the user model. So let me come down here and say, email is required, right? But first of all, let's validate the email. 
So to validate the email, what we're going to use is what is known as filter var. So I'm going to copy this. Filter var comes with PHP. We've used it already before in the app section. So if you remember very well, just to refresh your memory, uh, it's right over here, right? And we had to do something like this. So we will use a different filter this time. It's filter validate email. So it's not to, we're not sanitizing the email, we are validating the email. So that's what we want to do. So filter var, and that's the variable we are filtering, the email, and then the, the flag we're going to use. And this one is for validation. So we say filter validate uh, email. Like I told you, if you don't uh, know what to put in Futava, just type Futava on php.net and every, everything will come up. So here, if not, this Futava will return true or false because it's validating. So if not, meaning it's not a valid email, you can say email is not valid instead of email is required, even if it's empty. An empty email is not valid. So that solves the problem. Now, the second thing is we want to uh, make sure that there's no other email that is exactly the same as this one, okay? So in that case, let me change that to email again. So instead of checking whether it's empty or not, so if this is valid, then that's fine. Let's do an else statement so that only one of these runs at a time. If it's not valid, then there's no need to uh, to check whether it exists or not in the database. That's waste of resources. So here you can put comments if you want. Uh, check email, just to remind yourself what you're doing, etc. So in this case, we want to read from the database. Now, remember that the query function uh, lives here as well. Also, not just the query function, there's also, uh, because we're extending model and model here has one function so far, which is insect. Now we can get another function, create another function called where, which we will do. But for now, let's not do that because we, it will take longer. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, let me write a simple query here because we still need queries. I'm going to say query is equal to, but we will remove this query eventually. I'll say select all from users, because this is the users model anyway. Select all from users where email is equal to email. Let's tell it to limit one. So if it finds one, that's enough it to exit. So then we can get this query and run it here. So then I can say something like uh, query there. So we are querying this email and let's put email as the data here. So we'll put the query comma and then there's the data that we need to supply. So there's an email which is the value of the email, but we need to supply an array. So I'm going to put this in an array again. This is an array, but it's a value. It evaluates to a value. So I'll say email and do that. And then that. So what I've done here, I've just created an array on the fly. So this is an array where there's a key called email. And then the value is of the email that we are validating here. So I'm just sending this data through a query but where is this query coming from? We can do this like so. Because like I said, this is extending database. So we can still use query there. So a query returns true or false, depending on um, if things worked. So if we got an actual result, it will come back as an array. If not, it will come back as false. So we'll say, if it came back as true, then that email already exists. Okay, very good. So let's come back here and try this. So I'm going to refresh and try to 
insert this data again. And you see now it shows me that he may already exist as an error. So which means it didn't insert a third thing there. 